is that we can put our dishes away sort of damp in here. There's airflow through here and everything dries out. Oh, nice. So when you close it, there's a little bit of airflow vents out of the vehicle. And oh, yeah. We always have things dry in there. That's that way. nice. Um, and then just, you know, your typical stuff underneath kitchens and stuff. Alright, well, this is... And then we'll keep moving here. So this is um, our... Oh, nobody ever closes the lid. And so that's our nature's head. It's plumbed into the gray tank, so we don't have as many worries about emptying number one. And, uh, I mean, we haven't put a door in here. Just the curtain seems to work pretty well. I saved our bus mirror. That's our... It's a little mirror for... Hey, that's so where my mirror is at. Try to keep it there. Yeah, it works I like good, though. repurposing items. Oh, Chip okay. and Joanne Audrey. do it. Yeah, Audrey, please work on your homework, okay? Um, you can see here the framing. This is this sort of metal framing is demonstrative of how the entire bus is built in, on the interior. So, all of the bulkheads that you see all the way down are constructed from inch square tube, uh -huh. and then they're welded into sections that are then bolted together. So nice. there's a bunch, and those. And these, did you do it that way just to save on weight, or did you do it that way for the strength, or did you do that so you can transfer everything over to another bus? Uh, not so much transfer to another bus, but definitely weight and strength. And okay. then also, I am way more comfortable working in metal than I am in wood to make secure, strong connections with things. Okay. So for me, it was just the preference, the material preference. Right. Um, there's a post somewhere on my on my website, a uh, blog post about discussing the relative strength of different materials. Mm -hmm. And basically per linear foot, um, square tube square metal tube is about a third the weight and twice as strong as dug fur two by four. Oh nice. So this is the equivalent basically of constructing this out of two by fours with really strong joints. And uh but really, it's really really tiny space saving and yeah. uh, very uh Light. Right, right. Well, actually, you, lighter. Compared. Lighter. And if, if you had stack up the length of all the walls and everything else, it's actually a lot of space that you lose in a vehicle. It's, the margins are really tight. Yeah. So you actually gained a little weight savings by going with metal instead yes. of wood. Yep, yep. Cool, cool. Um, on critical surfaces like this one here, you can see this is a piece of half inch ply. Uh -huh. It's not really attached up here, but down further, it's attached securely to the frame and provides a sheer, a sheer strength. So. Okay. The square tube is sort of this rectangular shape, but then the, in many of the bulkheads, the plywood becomes a sheer, uh, uh, a sheer resistance for the okay, square so tubing. Okay, so it basically keeps it from going out square from moving. Right, if everything thing. twists. Yeah, so yeah. it creates a rigid, makes it more rigid. Right, right. Uh, um, our shower is here, so it's also our trash um, and, and laundry storage. storage. Yeah. yeah. Shower. Okay. Um, you can see the shower, even the shower is constructed from the square tubing on the outside. This is just a standard shower kit, like from Lowe's or whatever, where you could get it in pieces. Okay. But you see how thin the wall is. Yeah. But, but it, it's extremely rigid. Yeah. It'll go so, anywhere. I might have to do that in my next bus. So, yeah, when you put this in, and that get, all gets attached to the vehicle. So, these little units, like this unit, becomes sort of a bulkhead for everything to rest against from moving and things. Cool, cool. As we move further back, we have a wash basin area here. Um, the wash basin is uh, intended to be separate from the toilet and the shower area so everybody can be doing a different activity if it's evening or morning and we're trying to get ready for the day. Oh, cool. So we can cycle through faster. Yeah, so all, all the kids and... Hey, Daddy. Yeah. I'm letting you can play on my laptop. No. Okay. And how many you have actually living in here? Uh, we have four kids and two adults. So you have six of them There's in this six, space. Yeah. Hello. And then we Hello. have two dogs that hide underneath the bed sometimes too. These are transforming bunks. Um, the top ones just stow. And they fold down like this. Uh -huh. um, oh wow! Everybody's stuff under there. Great. And you got the I guess the uh, gas shocks to help with the uh, lifting and lowering of it back right. there. The the spring the Daddy. gas springs Audrey okay. Um, the gas springs. They just provide it so it's neutral, so the kids can open and close them themselves. And what's this cut up here? That for? was um, is that to make that space was a clearance. For? <laughs> that was me not quite measuring perfectly. Uh, I would love to maybe fill in that corner with a piece of trim, but the mattress and stuff has to tuck into that space when you close the beds. But you don't see it. Except you don't for see it. Time, except, so yeah, it's not really, it's not really all that bad. Right. 
Nice. Um, and oh, I just noticed the curtains up yeah, here so too. Yeah, there's a curtain track that goes all the way along, so that goes all the way to the end and provides <coughs> privacy for folks. And you still got a, a path, I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, big enough. Yeah, so you can still kind of walk through here. And see it's how about. It uh, did you use your shoulders as a measurement? Uh, yes and no. The first iteration of this design was terrible and had no space and he would have had to squeeze like this. Ah. Uh, I showed my wife and she said, what are you thinking? You're crazy. Here, let me do it for you. And so then um, we worked it out and just put tape lines down on the floor and tried it again and kind of came up with this design. Once we had that down, I drew the whole drawing design out in CAD so that I have a full 3D model of all this, including all the exact dimensions of materials. Um, and I have like my little 3D object guy that kind of is your standard human six foot tall and so I was able to place it around to see how things would fit. Oh, nice. Um, um, yeah. Can I ask what kind of CAD program you used? I used Rhino 3D. Is um, it a uh, freely given or is it... No, it's cost money. Cost so money? It costs a thousand dollars. But okay. it's well worth it because of all of the... It, it's a NURB surface object tool uh -huh. or program. So you draw NURB surfaces and uh, non-rational B-spline is what NURBS stands for. Oh, no. So they're not they're not polygons, they're infinitely curved shapes. And so they're it's fully scalable. You can scale to any size and shape you want. And so if you draw an intricate shape with folds and curves and things like that, if you um, want to print it at any resolution or realize it in, in higher resolution surfaces, uh, you can, when converting it to polygons, it, you never get like jagged lines and stuff because okay, it's... Okay, so it's, you can basically take it and you can zoom it up to right. the nth degree, but you won't have the, the, the jags. You won't see right. the actual... Imagine like, if you drew a BZA curve where just you drew a nice swoopy curve. Mm -hmm. If you drew it as a swoopy curve as a BZA curve, you can go as close as you want to and it's always curved. Okay. If you drew it as a section, a bunch of sections of, of line segments, eventually you'd see the joint where the well, the, there's a node and, and yeah. it has that. So so basically you're paying for extra quality in your uh, design process. Yeah, and it's really good for surfacing. It's just a good intermediate between like AutoCAD or, or SolidWorks and some, and like maybe uh, Maya, which is totally artistic and not necessarily, it's hard to keep things in reality and things like Maya. So Okay, cool. Uh, well, yeah. For, yeah, that's really cool though. Um, so then all of these beds, they have these frames, so I... I constructed this all out of just standard metal stock. Um, so you use uh, in the welding gear for a long time, weren't you? I've I was been I was into welding before I built this. Yeah. Okay. I've okay. built several uh, trucks and things, and built other vehicles and all sorts of stuff for folks. Oh, cool. So this is the way these are constructed. It's just actually a bunch of flat bar of different dimensions. So uh -huh. this piece of flat bar is stacked on smaller pieces of flat bar. You kind of stack them in there and then weld the ends together and then this is like a tongue that goes through it so it acts like a latch mm -hmm. and the shear strength of this tongue metal right here through the other piece is pretty strong so it's yeah, more yeah. more than sufficient to keep everything safely closed and so they're sort of on a spring catch thing. Mm -hmm. um, the reason this one isn't latched is because if the kids don't make their beds right they just shove everything closed and it doesn't quite close. When we're driving, we make our beds. This better. one's latched right here, right? right? So this is this is latched correctly. Okay. So so that way, if you see how it, when he goes in, it's in place. Nice. And then these tables fold up and they snap into place. So mm -hmm. when you fold them down, the table rotates all the way underneath and the bed folds out. Nice, nice. So you can switch it. It's all transformable. Uh, there was very little clearance. You can see. Yeah. Oh, this drink pouring all over the floor because the kids can't pick up their stuff. Can I get a paper? Kids get a paper are towel. kids. Yeah, that happens. Yeah. Paper towels. Yeah. Yep. So is it a wood floor? Nope, it is that uh, the cheapest adhesive vinyl plank I possibly could find. It was, we, at a time when we moved this, the vehicle was empty and we were selling our house and we needed something besides a plywood floor that was on the floor. Mm -hmm. So I just laid this down. It's not the greatest floor, but it's been... We, could get, we, were, we, were, we were broke and needed to be built. I put all the floor in and one day just glued it all in. They just peel and stick is all yeah. they are. Um, but, uh, falling off by the doors. but anyway, maybe one day we'll peel them all up and put something else. So there's two and a half inches of styrofoam insulation below the the uh, the floor deck, 
So, and then it has like sleepers to keep everything not squishing and compressing. And then we also have three inches on the roof. You can see, I don't know if you've seen what the standard <laughs> ring looks like for a hatch. <coughs> yeah, usually they're not as wide yeah, as that. Yeah, so, so it's it all stretched like you, way out. Did you add four inches up there? Or? Uh, about three inches. Three inches. Yep. And uh, here, this is kind of fun. 